Hi there, um, this video comes with some exercise files and a cheat sheet for Photoshop. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for those. Okay, it's part of my larger course, which you can go and check out. There'll be a link there as well. Um, all right, enjoy the video. First up, let's open up the files that we're gonna be using. Let's go to File, let's go to Open, and in your Exercise Files, under 10 Blending Modes, we're gonna open up all these ones that say Bottle Island. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, and five. The fourth one's by Tim Marshall. Thanks, Tim. All right, so we're gonna start with this glass bottle here, and we're gonna put in O2. So we're gonna grab this island and stick it in. So we're gonna use the quick selection tool. In terms of the brush, mm, something about 50. 50 is always a good number. Click hold and drag across our island. It's up to you whether you want the sand or not. And in terms of how hardcore we're going with this, we're not going very hardcore at all. Okay, so all these selections around here, we could use a select and mask, but in this particular case, like the first one, this, the thing you saw at the beginning there, it's, it's quite forgiving with layer masks. So we could double back and fix up the layer if you find we go a little too fast here. But yeah, I'm going to grab the sand just because. I'm going to get a really small paintbrush and go into these corners. I'll get the editor to speed this bit up. All right, so I got my selection. If I wanted to do better, what I could do is I could go to my layer mask button here. Okay, and then go to select and mask and try and work it out a bit better, but it looks pretty good. And because it's the blue showing through the trees, it's gonna look fine because we've got a blue sky to go behind it anyway. So with our move tool, click, hold, drag, drag, drag to bottle 01 and down here. It's the wrong size. So to be fancy, we're gonna right click layer one and say you need to be a smart object. And then I'm gonna use my transform tool. I'm using command T or control T on a PC. Okay, I'm gonna get it so it fits in here. Turn. All right, so that's my island. Next bit is the sky. So I'm just gonna close down island two, not save it, just to make things tidier along the top here. So we're gonna use bottle island three. We used this image earlier on in a different project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the move tool, click hold, drag, drag, drag to the first tab, holding down, holding down, let go. I'm gonna kind of drag it up and have it just behind the island there. Now what you'll notice is I'm missing a chunk here. It's just not quite big enough. I could just transform it. I'm pretty sure nobody would uh, um, know that I stretched it a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you, we're gonna double back on some of the skills we've learned so far, just to compound those. So I want a bit more sky. So remember you can use the crop tool. It's quite a cool way of doing that. So the crop tool, make sure that along here, content aware is turned on. And I'm just gonna drag a little bit that way and a little bit that way and then hit return and hope Photoshop doesn't make a mess of the sky. It's pretty good with clouds-ish. It's pretty good, I think that's <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Nice work Photoshop. It's kind of weird down here. Ah, I'm happy with it. So back to my move tool, click hold, drag, 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 back into here. And what I might do is that first layer here, I'm gonna just click on the trash can. So this guy now is in the reasonable right place. I'm just using my arrow keys just to tap it around. So now what I need to do is mask it inside the bottle. Like I do lots of things. We need to mask all sorts of stuff inside the bottle. So what we're gonna do is create a selection and reuse it a few times. So it's a bit of a new skill. So first up, beyond the background layer, let's grab our quick selection tool. I'm gonna to turn auto enhance off only cause I need to be really rough in this case and it slows down my computer while I'm recording. Brush size, I'm gonna increase up. I'm using remember, my square brackets next to my P key. Okay, and I'm grabbing everything. I don't want the lid. So I'm gonna get close to the lid. Cause I want the lid to shine through, right? I just want I just want to select the glass parts of this bottle. Cool, we're trying to get it all. It's hard to know sometimes if you've got it all. A nice little trick is you can just click on this gently. <laughs> I say gently, just see this little icon here, it's called the quick mask. We're not gonna use quick mask. It's, a, it's just an older technique for doing masking. But what's really cool is it's quite obvious where I haven't selected. Don't double click it fast, it loads up the setting. So just toggle it once, gentle. Okay, just a nice way of going, I've missed you. Toggle it once again, on, off, and I can see two more parts. I 
All right, that's good enough for me. Um, if you see some bits that are missing, don't, you could spend a lot more time here, and you should. So I've got the bottle selected, but I wanna use this a couple of times because we're gonna use this to trim the sky, but we're also gonna use it to trim the water. So there's a cool little option here that says select save selection. I'm gonna give this a name, I'm gonna call this my bottle selection. And just means later on, when I need it, I can go back to select and say, actually load that selection I made earlier. So I've got it up once, I'm gonna click on my sky layer, I'm gonna actually start naming layers in here to help you guys. Well, just to make it easier to follow. So this is the sky, this is the island. And the background is gonna be named bottle. Awesome, so sky layer selected, Got my selection, I'm gonna click on layer mask. You can see it's a bit rough along the top there. I'm not worried because we're gonna use our blending modes. Now with blending modes, we've got two things over here. We've got the mask, okay, and we've got the actual image itself. So a blending mode on this is different from a blending mode on my actual image, and that's what I want. I want my sky selected because that's what I want to blend underneath with my bottle. And it's gonna kind of work our way through, and dissolve never works. Darken's pretty cool. You can start to see that kind of nice interaction with glass. Blending modes are perfect for glass. Anything that's transparent. Okay, you just kind of work your way through until you, I quite like that linear burn. Just keep, I'm just toggling down now. If you've forgotten the shortcut, you probably have, because it's a tough one. If you are sick of doing this, clickety-click. Okay, so what you can do is click on one of them, make sure you're on your move tool, hold down your shift key on your keyboard, and then tap the plus key on your keyboard. You can see it just keeps toggling through. I'm gonna use linear burn because I like it and I practiced already and I've got it written right here. <laughs> use linear burn. But it will depend on your sky and the bottle. Next bit is the water. Um, the water, so I'm gonna close down my clouds. Bye bye, don't save. And in here, there's my water. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my rectangle marquee tool and I'm just gonna grab, I don't want the whole thing, I just want a chunk of it. I don't want all this stuff at the top. I'm gonna grab my move tool, drag it across, dump it in there. And it's not quite big enough. Now this is where I'm gonna cheat. I should go and use the content aware cropping like we did with the sky, but this water is so, it's gonna be so forgiving. Nobody's gonna notice it went that big. I share that secret with you. You should properly go back and do it, but just a little bit of a transform that size, nobody's gonna notice. Use my move tool to kind of drag. I like the bubbles, so I wanna kind of get those bubbles in there. Now I wanna use the same mask I did for the sky. This is where this awesome thing comes in. Select load the selection, which one I want from where it says channel, say bottle selection, that's the one I want. Thank you very much. Now I can hit layer mask. Now I'm on my move tool and I'm playing with the blending modes. And yeah, just kind of toggling through to see which one I like. I know exactly which one I like because I've got it written down. I'm gonna start with multiply. The thing is, it's gonna be like the under island like you saw at the beginning there, so I might have to change this as we go along. Multiply looks average now, but I feel like it looks better later on when we get our under island bit in. But no, if you've picked different water, it's gonna be a different blending mode. Okay, so we've done him, thank you very much. And the last one, island five, I just went through stock library sites and tried to find something that looked like the underneath of an island. It looks pretty good. Um, well, I've tested it and it works pretty well. And um, so I'm using my quick selection tool. I'm being really rough with this because who knows what this, like it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going underwater. Yeah, looks good to me. I love it because it's got this kind of like uh, discolored bit where it's against the waterline. It's gonna look cool. Okay, so same thing, make a selection, layer mask, grab my move tool. Drag it in over here, drag it in over here. I'm gonna have to scale it. So before I scale it, I'm gonna right click it and say, you are a smart object, my friend. And I'm gonna double click him and I'm gonna call him Lower Island. I'm not sure what to call that. Let's even give this guy the name of water. So Lower Island, let's rotate you and scale you. So I'm using Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC. And you can just, you can see I'm holding Shift while I'm dragging the edges here. Okay, far out was a rotation and click on this dot here to get transform. So a bit further out, rotation, right on the dots, transform. You already knew that. Cool. Awesome. And then it comes down to the blending mode again. So back to my move tool and just cycle through until, oh, 
just cycle through until you find something you like. Oh, that looks cool. That's not even what I had in my little list here. But soft light's gonna work. Okay, so we could be there. I'm gonna share, you, uh, share with you one more little trick. I find that when you're dealing with glass, you can often get like the darks and shadows working well with the blending mode, or you can get the kind of highlights from the glass working well, but never on the same blending mode. So what I find cool is this last layer here, we're gonna right click it and duplicate it. Okay, this is going to be bottle highlights. And all I'm gonna do is drag it to the top. I'm gonna move this up so you can see all my layers. So I've got the bottle at the bottom. He's kind of filling in the back there. And I've got this guy I'm adding to the top. Now what happens is I can use the blending mode on this, okay, to try and find something that's gonna help with the highlights. Okay, so I think, let's turn it off and on. I'm on darken, so it's not doing anything, right? Another multiply is not what I want. I want to find something that's kind of helping with the lights. Is that doing nothing? Let's find one. Too much, too much, too much. Ooh, it's kind of cool. Overlay, probably a little bit. I might use overlay and just lower down the opacity. Soft light, similar, but don't have to lower the opacity down. You can see it's changed the water quite a bit, but you can cycle through. I know that soft light works for me in this case. Okay, brings just some of the highlights back in the glass here. Now it's looking good. I should have spent a little bit more time on my mask when I said, don't worry about it. I lied. <laughs> There's quite a clear contrast between these two. Now that could be it for us. I am, if you're happy with that, okay, we've done, it's reasonably complex. We've thrown in a few of the tricks we've learned throughout this course. We've got masking, we learn how to save a selection, we're using blending modes, which you're using more and more, right? Let's do kind of two last little things that you might use to tidy it up that I really want to do. I hope it doesn't get too advanced. Next one is, is we've got this kind of bottles highlight layer and it's doing some cool stuff but it doesn't just have to be one on the top and one on the bottom. Often, depending on the image, I'll make a couple on the top here and mix blending modes. There's no absolute rule of how many you should have and what they should be, but I'm gonna duplicate this one and we're gonna put in the darker tones again, which I'll call the shadows. Okay, and up the top here, I'm gonna cycle back through it again, just to find something that has fills. I feel like that soft light kind of lightened it up too much. That back over the top again, I think gives it a bit more fullness. So you can kind of see that's with how we had it when we started. And it looks quite obvious now, it's quite weak with the shadow uh, highlights. I added this one here as a soft light and it kind of filled it out, but a little bit too much. Then I put another one on top that's back to being, it's this multiply and it just kind of fills it in again. I don't know, it gives it a little bit more substance and the edges a bit more substance and hides some of my bad uh, selections. And the last little touch-ups are going to be the dodge and burn tool. I'm pretty much just gonna use the burn tool to darken edges. So with the burn tool, I'm gonna work on the sky first. So I've got the sky layer selected. If you converted it to a smart object, like I said, cause that's really good, uh, you need to right click it and say rasterize, rasterize layer. Okay, but our sky doesn't have a smart object. I'm gonna grab my burn tool. Okay, it's this guy here under dodge, grab burn. Now up here, I'm gonna make sure it's on highlights because I wanna try and darken the highlights, which is this guy here. Exposure is probably a little high on 100%, um, but it'll give you an example of what I wanna do. You probably do yours and build yours up a little slower. In terms of the brush size, I've got a really big brush, 800. I'm just making sure it's got a nice fluffy edge by the hardness down at zero. Okay, I'm just trying to do that. I'm trying to darken those edges so it's not so crisp on the edge. Same with the water. Okay, I'm gonna darken the edges up. Now, because these aren't particularly highlights, I'm gonna try the midtones or shadows to darken the edges. And midtones work. I want the depth to be a little darker down the bottom here as well. Looks quite cool. I like it anyway. All right, that is going to be it. Probably needs a lens flare. You're more than welcome to add a lens flare to your version. What we'll do in the next video though, is we'll set a proper class exercise. So work your way through this one. Um, actually, oh, last thing before I go. The island here is really sharp and that's fine. Okay, but with the island layer selected, I'm gonna play with the blending mode of this as well. Just to, I don't know, I feel like it needs to be blending with the background a little better. So <laughs> yeah, last little bit, or maybe super high contrast like linear light. 
I like that. Multiply, it will depend on your island and how good your selections are, but I think that looks kind of cool. Before, after. It's so subjective. But yeah, that is going to be the end of putting an island in a bottle. Really love making this course. It's not often I get to put stuff in a bottle. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Hi, it's me again. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up really helps me and what I'm doing. Um, also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because I release a video like this every week. Um, also know that this is part of my larger course. Okay, so this is like a free part of it. There's a larger course called Photoshop Essentials. So you could go check that out. There's a link in the description for that full course. Also know that there's exercise files. Those are free to download. Go Go check that out, link in the description. Another link in the description will be the cheat sheet. So I make it like a PDF uh, cheat sheet for Photoshop with all the tips and tricks you can print off and stick next to your computer and be more awesome. Link in the description. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's enough. Uh, hi, Dada.